moving on every body part of the and the See, by the time you warm up all this, A, your heart rate's up, and B, your shoulders, they can't necessarily get hurt, so they're warmed up. I, I don't know, most of the injuries that anybody has, they function. So being the fact that even on leg day, I'll warm up my shoulders. When you can get really good at raising, just that minus of tension with your shoulder, they also can play. Okay, that's good. I can do it. So, so we're doing it right now. Or we're going to work out. Every single day. Every single day. That you train. Okay. What about uh, my own concern about work over work and muscle? No. Remember, we discussed that earlier. It would be very difficult to get over the muscle. Like, I don't I want you to get that out of your head. If that were the case, I wouldn't be needed. Give me your hands right here. Three. Give me a slight bend. Okay. Bring your elbows on to me. Beautiful. You'll know if you're doing it right. The dumbbell is below the elbow. Okay. Your arms don't have to be straight. I'd rather than not be. Your shoulders back with them. Yep. Feel that through here? Me too. Okay. Do four warm ups today. One to the side, one to about three quarter, one to the front, and one back. You're going to do this at the beginning of every single workout. Most injuries come from shoulder stress. Okay? I myself have fallen injury many times to not warming up the shoulders. So I just put this into my workout. No matter what I do, I know I'm going to walk up to the rack at the beginning of leg day and I'm going to do my set of 80 shoulder raises. Okay. These will switch to the front. And keep your hand position like that. I'm out, I'm out of it. And the same thing happens in the back of the front too. On these ones, just don't, don't bring them past you. Okay? They're, they're going to swing you and catch them, which is all I want. I want them to catch. sort of cardio or cycling, they usually have us football practice, all that stuff. So it does make sense to give yourself a stretch. You know, if you're pulling that thing, pull it over. And you're your accountability, you know if it hurts. So one of my favorite things to do with that actually, is I'll take a, a seven. Okay, remember how I told you you can push your arm as far away from your body as you can? So right now I'm literally pushing my arm away. Now the only way I can do that is to not flex my arm. So it's, it's literally dangling there. If my shoulder was to rip out, it would just rip out and fall on the floor, right? So as I'm pushing away, I slowly take my neck that way. Stretches through the trap. I can feel it go through the insert of my shoulder all the way down. Okay, you can see that groove through the shirt. And you'll find it, right? Lean back. And it'll hurt right there. It feels like it's just gonna snap. 
Okay? Try it. You feel that? Yes, correct. All the way through here, and then back through here. So this is not flexed. Now take your head back with it, so it's now open. Nope, you took it down. Let's take it over. Other way. Just leave it there. Yep. Now find it. Gain ground. All through there. Now, I'll do this sometimes with an 80 pound dumbbell. You know, just because it's killing me. So, try the other arm, and let's do your other shoulders. It's actually a great stretch. He literally has to let his arm go limp, take his neck that way, and it stretches all the way through your trap. It's actually, it's an amazing feeling. You can feel it go through the insert and all the way down your arm. You can tell he's just barely holding on to the dumbbell. And that's the idea. If that arm was flexed, he wouldn't be stretching. So I can tell he's doing it right and feeling that. Not only by his facial expression, but uh, his arm's not flexed. I want here. Okay. See my back? See my back? Make my back. Make your back look like mine. You're going to have to use that ass. Yep. And it hurts right here, doesn't it? Okay, from there, bring it out. One, two, now lean forward, tiny bit. Three, yep. Four, five, five, six, seven. It's a little tiny muscle, okay. right here. Now, it will work a lot better to shoot your elbows not at the back wall, but directly at the seam. <laughs> See how they're going back here? Go on here. No. Face those weights together, back at each other. There they are. No, don't move them. Just leave the face like that. Now take it up. There it is. Okay, that was perfect. All the ones you're doing, those are perfect. Now don't let the arms flare. Keep those elbows. Yes. Keep those elbows back toward me. They're immediately back to the other room. Beautiful. Finish your 20, you're done. All right, you're good. See? It's awesome. Yeah. As with just about every single person that learns how to do um, rear delts, okay? It's such a small little muscle right here on the back side. Now, if my elbows drop back, see how better positioning? What I'm gonna do is, if my elbows go back here, that's back. If somehow I can keep my wrists facing each other and shoot my elbows toward the ceiling, and I almost try to overcorrect and shoot them out. So basically they're, they're somewhere near my chin when they're out here, right? Boom. Boom. And when you push them forward and they don't come back, you can almost feel the pinching of the range of motion stopping it where, where that contraction happens. Okay? So one thing we learned in the watching this. Don't let your elbows come back here, okay? You're watching. Here. No, nope. almost like a pinching. Straight out. Well, now if you need accountability, straighten your arms. I finished more than one set with the weight of my hands, without weights, okay? It would be redundant. All right, let's go. Try one more of these. Same one? Yep. You'll know if you're doing right if your back is, yeah, flat. There you go. Now see where your elbows are? I want your elbows shoot this way, and your wrists turn back. Now I want you, when you come up, to put those elbows toward me as hard as you can. Yes! Two. Thank you. Three. Come back toward me. Four. Every time. Five. Six. But I need those weights facing each other one way. There it is. See how that elbow is facing that way? I need that elbow facing straight up. So I'm going to slow you down. All right, turn those weights toward each other. All right, now slowly come on. Down. Beautiful. See how that elbow is facing toward the ceiling? You feel that? Great job. That's inside there. Yeah, beautiful. Time one. 
Most people, once again, see how you need to draw your arms down, because that's the way you're used to do it. And now on, just remember, your arms, like, I want you to picture a table, and you're sliding across the table. The table doesn't drop, so you don't get to master range of motion that trains that muscle. If you want to have to go back, do these all day long, but you won't have that rear and regular part. All right. Yeah, when, when you have, See that right there? That's literally the rear delt. It's very hard to get. Because it's such a little muscle, right? People either they pick too heavy a weight and they try to train it, or they just can't find it on their mind muscle connection. So right now you got a shoulder. Okay, and as you're watching this video, we're gonna build this guy. So he's got a great front delt. But we're missing this part. He wants this to come around, and then it has to be a big circle, right? Well, if it comes around and there's no this part of the circle. It's not that cool a circle anymore. So we're gonna basically put a bump right there. When his shoulder comes around, boom. Okay, right now we're trying to find that rear delt. Now lift your arms up. Okay, see how those elbows are facing toward me? Take one step this way. Thank you. Now, take your arms forward. Now I want you to press your arms back. And keep them up high. Back. Keep them back. Bring them back. Now see how they're dropping? There we go. Feel that? Now, you can turn here. Right here. <coughs> right there. That is what was engaged. See that's popping right there? If as soon as his elbow drops, it goes away. But you bring it up, now flex it again. See, it pops. Gotta have that. Don't drop your elbows when you're doing rear delts. Thanks, man. Yes. So we're here. We're right here, and we're right here, and we're right here. Entire shoulder bone. So, four sets of dumbbells. What do you usually press? Shoulder bone. 25. Okay, can you take it? Switch to 25. -ish. Go ahead and have a seat. Good. Four sets of 25. Probably, I would say this is common. You need this to muscle. This, this particular one. He's explaining to me that he's got a, a weak point training, and that's his shoulders. And that's what we're doing now. So, he's got a, a little bit of a shoulder injury. We're gonna try to baby it. Meanwhile, rip it apart his muscle tissue. So it's a <laughs> thin ice we're walking on here, but we're gonna walk it anyway. Now we're gonna go through four sets of 10 to 12, full on shoulder presses, and he's gonna do a one, two count up, one, two count down. This is a constant movement. Around rep seven, it's gonna burn like hell, but he's gonna push. Uh, arch in the back, no back. Nope, straight. I mean, strong, whatever you feel strong is. Yeah. One. Two. Three, bring those to the up. Four, you don't have to bring them all the way down. Up, five, up, six, up, seven, up, bring them a little closer. Eight, up, nine, there we go. Ten, take it to twelve. Left. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Uh, uh, higher. We're bringing down on benches. You know why? Because you're tall. You have long limbs. And that made you stronger. So, he made a very good point. He's been going wide on all his bench presses. And he said that that's what's caused his shoulder injury. Um, makes a lot of sense because some of the gym is a, a weight. It's like a competition with yourself to bench more weight. His arms are twice as long as the local bodybuilder. Twice as long. So for him to get that weight up, it's very, very difficult. So what do you do? You go out here. The weight doesn't have to follow the same distance, okay? But kills your front delts. Big, big problem. You all right? I have to keep him closer. 
Uh, but you lose your strength. Yeah. So it, it, when I had you go out, I wanted you out because that was almost perfect for him. And then you, the more tired you got, you went further out yeah. and forward. You weren't pressing anymore. You're almost pressing out. Yeah. So you want to keep them back here. So this time I'm going to make sure your elbows are almost to where you can feel your back pressing. Right, let's go get it. That was about a one minute rest. Now we start sweating. Second, pull your elbows back. Did you feel that? Yeah. That's immediately anatomy perfect. So when you were doing that exercise, it doesn't matter what exercise. What is what is your brain focusing on? What are you thinking about? When you're, when you're about? In the middle of the exercise, I'm thinking, am I trying? Am I doing it right? And make sure to take as much as I can. Not about the number. At the beginning of the exercise, I'm thinking about proper form because I have a hurt shoulder too. So I immediately want to walk up to it and go like that. I want to be the, the bench press guy that's like this. So it's really hard for me to keep that form, exactly what you just described. So, and then toward the end of the workout, I try to go to a calm place. I try to stop making angry faces and be a man. Is that as much as I give? Even at a half a second, notice. I don't have a partner, right? I don't train with anybody. So it's literally, is this weight going to fall back on my head? Or, David, man up, can you get it up? And it's, it's a scary question in the middle of some reps, but you got to ask yourself that every single second. And you envision the muscle that you're working at, and like, what's getting in that burn while you're doing it? I don't envision it because I'm watching it. I, that's, that's why I like the mirror. I'm not a pompous ass. I want to look at myself in the mirror and everybody look at me. I've been doing this since day one when I was fat. Because I wanted to just make sure that my elbows didn't move. So somebody looking at me is going to look at, oh, David's looking at his bicep. Uh huh. I'm looking at my elbow, making sure that that some bitch doesn't move. And when I come up, the weights aren't up here. The weights are down here. If I have to, I'll drop my wrists <laughs> just to make sure that that elbow is higher than the weight. Same thing here. When I'm going to the side, is it too far forward? Is it too far back? Anything and everything. All right, that's, I'll watch that. That's why you're trained right here in front of the mirror. Over there. Now, when you pick this up, this is what I want you to think. As soon as you get it up, I want you to think, are my elbows back hard? Pat, pat. And then as you go up, I want you to think about your scapula and all this shit rubbing because you're doing it right. And how cool it is to not only build your triceps, but your back as a secondary muscle group is now engaged, saving your front delts, which are going to get worked by chest anyway. Because we don't really care if we're working it. Right? Just trying to bring all this in. Why did you do it? Because you want to be good at holding 30 pounds above your head. 
The only reason. <coughs> Make gym fun. Okay, so when you work, when I work out by myself, I cheat myself. I know I could be one, but I don't have a theory to pick. But you know you do. <laughs> now you do. Now you watched yourself. You watched yourself go, I did it. I just watched myself do something I didn't want to. That I did maybe because the camera was on me and because Timberly's pushing me. But that's the idea of the camera, is you just watch yourself do it. You now know you can do it. The heart rate monitor is the same thing. You're gonna get a heart rate monitor. And then when you look down on a set of shoulder presses and you see 155, and then you're training on your own and you see 125, it means you really don't want shoulders. You, know? you get paid more. I mean, next set. Sets are uh, averaging about 45 to one minute rest. He's got very good questions today. But you've got to be careful as you drop. Notice how I try to help him get him down? There's a transition there that's scary for the trainer and the client when they know there's nothing left. And what happens is you end up swinging it down, and what catches? We warm them up, but what catches? Front delt. And that's usually where it pops. And every one of us end up with an injury because we do that. So please don't do that. What's that? Bro, that bullshit we just talked? Yeah. Come on. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, I want you to spend some time at the bottom this time. So bring it down. Get it all the way wide. Yes. Now, come up the court. One, two, three. Give me that strong fist. Strong fist. Punch this guy. Five, six, seven, eight, eight. Bring those elbows in, remember? That's what you want this to hurt. You want this to hurt. One more. Got it. <laughs> Four sets. Okay? We spent a little bit of time on the first few sets up top. So I wanted to break in the bottom two. We don't want to rob them of that. Um, a lot of times we get too tired, the entire motion will get you um, off balance or something, you end up with an injury. So I had him bounce the top a little bit. You heard me talk about his wrist a little bit. You saw his ribs. The wrist wasn't necessarily strong on some of those. Well, that's, that's a, it's a grip issue and it's also injury prone. So you want to keep those wrists really, really strong. And I reference punching the ceiling, that's just David words, but literally it's you're not going to punch the ceiling like that or like that. You're going to punch it straight up, strong wrists. Ladies, for those of you watching, you guys are famous for this, the, the soft wrist. Okay? You got to keep it strong no matter what you do. As long as we're not doing exactly what you've been doing, anything's going to work. So I'm just showing you another way to keep your own ass. And then in the end, you that level of ass kicking, like for instance, I never really go above um, 80 pound dumbbells. But I went from being able to bench 80 pound dumbbells 12 times to almost 30 times. Okay, So that's, instead of going more weight, I go more reps. Either way around, as hard as I can go. Right? If you have a workout written for you, and it's crazy enough, follow it. But most of them aren't. So for me, it's, I literally, that question you asked uh, earlier, what do I do halfway through my set? Did I, I'm at rep seven or eight or 10. Is that enough? Is that enough to go win a championship or take my shirt off and be proud at the beach? Or do I need a little bit more right now? When do you do that? When do you stretch out that muscle? Again? All the time. In the middle? Yep. I mean, I'll, I did it this morning when I was training shoulders. Like, I just went through this workout. So, bicep is a secondary muscle to shoulders. So, your bicep should be feeling pumped right now. 
same thing with that. So pop it out. As you can see, mine's under it. We were showing him the, my bicep stretch. I love it. Basically, stick your arm out as far as you can until you're going to feel like it's going to break. Then you drop your bone. Then you try to break your wrist. Now, basically, I'm trying to take this finger, that pinky finger, as far that way as I can take it without moving my wrist. So, once again, take my arm straight out, elbow at the floor, turn my wrist without moving my arm, then take that elbow. Just basically try to break my wrist and arm at the same time. And it'll give you a decent stretch right here. Feel that? He asked me how often you can do it. I do it, I don't know, probably 25 times a week at least. Ooh, now we're going to do four sets of Arnold Press, the variation. I love them. The structured environment on the back. You're going to touch the weights in front of you. These weights. Makes sense to square them up like he just did so visually you don't have to pay attention. Okay, now bring them up. One, two, three, right here, four, five, six, seven, there we go. Eight, come on, nine, ten, two more. Left, twelve. You boys sit by your arms. Your set is not over until the weight is safely down and away from your body. If you let go the second you're done, you're going to rip out a shoulder. That was a very, very, very bad example. <laughs> this guy's pretty tough, so he got away with it, but don't do that. Okay? Make sure you're safe. I want you to close yourself. Yeah, I'm going to drop you a little bit. Now I want you to notice his arm. The leverage in which we're going to put this weight, his first set with double 17s, get okay, out still hard. This is going to be every bit as hard. We're going to slow down his range of motion and we're going to make the leverage of his arms step forward. So basically, I don't want your back arms. So arch back hard. he doesn't have a heart rate monitor on, I can't look at his watch. But I know because he can't really talk to me right now, that was a good set. The second they pop up and can say something, I mean, honestly, that's, <laughs> they're not, their pain, thre their pain threshold either wasn't met or they have oxygen to obviously talk to me with. So, great set. Where'd that burn? Where'd it burn? It's more of those. Okay? Now I want you to imagine I'm not here this time. So I want to watch you go through the pain game. So you're going to sit down, you're going to look in the mirror, and you're going to go, okay, my arms have to go away from my body in order for the leverage. And they have to go up. So if it's me, I sit down here, and I punch from the top of that window. I pick a point where my accountability point is. My hands aren't there, but I have to get to it. And then if I, I mean, if I have to take it there, I think about a guy just keeping my car. Or I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, some whatever would make me want to do that really hard. Okay. Well, make sure your uh, slide's right. Yep. You're going for right about there. <sighs> 
down. Everything else is silent. Only the damage right now is your pain. So you can have it in six hours in here, as long as that hurts so bad you can take it by the end of the second. Alright, so we got to stop this. something and there's another way to do it but you're not quite sure if that other way is harder it's the right way okay flat out if moving your elbows becomes harder don't move the whole point of this is to be as difficult as you can possibly make it and stand it to put your body through a stress okay to, to, to shock your nervous system to rip apart muscle tissue now, all those adjectives and verbs, those aren't soft, friendly words. You're in here to go through a trauma. Now, football coach always said, Dave, are you injured or are you hurt? If you're hurt, keep playing. If you're injured, we'll get you off the field. My job, your job, is to hurt yourself, not injure yourself. Know the difference. Let's go. Last set. speed right now. And as you're watching this, you're going to watch yourself punching the ceiling. There's a time and a place to punch the ceiling. It's usually at the end of the workout when your mind-muscle connection and everything hurts so bad all you can do is get through it. We all get to that point. That's fair. But at the beginning, when you're all there mentally and you're all there physically and we're not burning so bad we can't take it anymore, slow down the rep. Focus on the muscle group intended doing the work. Then go fast. Good job. Here we go, Grace. Right. Now, you asked me what to do. 
Show me the traps. Oh, yeah. Now I want you to raise the map position. Go back. Yes. Oh. Remember to talk about speed? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I don't get this guy for too long. He's going back to New York. The point was is he had to do as much as he could do. You know, I try to set a number to shoot for because pain <laughs> will uh, overrun your natural ability to choose your own weight. But I still don't know if that's all he could do. But he does. And that's what matters. He knows when he set that weight down whether he could do one more or 50 more. The whole goal is to get it inside his head that he's a machine. That he can do whatever way he wants, with an ability, as many times as he wants. Now let's say he just did 70 of those. Would he walk over and grab the 40 pound weight, acknowledging that's 50, and do another 20? Until his arms ripped out, all the way down to 10 pounds? So he can't even hold up the weight of his own fists? It's up to him. That's the way I train, that's what I'm trying to teach him right now. Ready? Your elbows, you want to go straight up. One, two, three, See, the reason why you straighten your arms is when you come down, flex that. Feel that? All the way down there. Now bring it up. Traps. Now go down, flex. Traps. Flex. Traps. Flex. Traps. Flex. Oh. Traps. Flex. Traps. Flex. Traps. Yes. Take it. Give me some chest. Give me some chest. Oof. You know, when you're not holding that, it's because it hurts. Mm -hmm. So hold it. Yes. Take mm -hmm. that chest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here. Hold that with one hand. Super set. Let's go. One, two, three. Hey, look in the mirror. Watch yourself transform. But don't roll your shoulders up and down. Yes. Slow down. I want you gripping that thing as hard as you can. Slow. There you go. Swim through it. Enjoy it. Doesn't matter how many times you can do it. Come on. Okay. Now just hold it. Legs together. 30. 19. No. Full. 18. 17. Oh wait. Sorry. That's 25. 24. 23. Hold on. 22. 21. 20. 19. 18. 17. Crouch chest. 15. 14. 13. 12. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 
four. I'll grab this one. Three, two, one. <sighs> Now, I can't tell you how many workouts, whether they be shoulder or traps, even legs, when I finished off with just holding some heavy weights by my side. How long can I hold them? Bag of groceries in this hand, maybe a seven pound crying three year old in this hand. However you want to do it, these happen to be 50 pounds. But the idea is just stand there and hold it and take that pain. Guarantee his heart rate was high. His shoulders will remember it. When was the last time he held 100 pounds? for 45 seconds. Longer than that, because I made him do a set before. Good job, buddy. Now, he just asked me, this is what he said to me. And he gave me that look of disappointment. He said, Dave, you just went from a 50 to a 30? Almost like, you know, well, what the hell? Well, I'm gonna slow him down, okay? I'm gonna allow him to bring his weight higher, and his form will be more perfect. And let's ask him at the end of this set if it burned any less. Acknowledging the 20 pound difference per rep. Chest tracks. There. Get it up. There it is. Yeah, there it is, isn't it? All the way down. I want you to think about your chest. Now I want you to lean back a little bit. Press that chest hard. Back at the bottom of every single one. Okay? Do it again. Excuse me. Yes! Press your biceps in. Squeeze it. Yeah. Come on. Hurts, doesn't it? Give me 10 more. One. Two. Three. Your chest. Three. Okay, see that shoulder? Fix it. Solid chest, hard as you can. Feel that? Okay, you saw that. Now lift it out just two inches. Hold there, hold there, hold there. Five, four, chest. Three, come on, two. This is not chest day, but why not get a pump with your chest when you stand there and be all badass training your traps and your shoulders? Okay, it's a secondary muscle, you know it's getting some work. All I did is I had him do a little bit of manipulation, and it's not that doesn't work his chest. Okay, he's not going to get a massive muscle tear from that in a, in a ten pound gain this year. But guarantee his mind muscle connection is better. Just triggering it a little bit while I had a pump, and then leaving him alone, going off and doing more traps and worrying about that mind muscle connection. But just for a second. He knew exactly where his chest was. Do that every day, and if somebody asks you to flex it or you're asked to use it to do the exercise, you can do it easier. Good job, man. One more. Beautiful. Now I have 
literally have to touch his chest to make sure it's flexed. That's one of my favorite tips in the whole world. I use it with abs all the time. I'll literally grab my abs. Now you can't do that, but I can do it too. I'll grab my abs so that I know that that's flexed. I know that I'm sucking in. I'll be in so much pain that I can't even think about it, right? But I don't have to, because I know if my fingers expand, just I've done it so many times now, that I'm not sucking in. Okay, same with the chest. You watch in the mirror, but his shirt's not really conducive for knowing if it's exactly flexed or not. I'm flexed right now, you can't tell from here. It's just a tiny little bit of difference. So, hold it. Hold it out there, flex it. Am I flexing? Am I flexing? Same thing with the other one. It's gonna break going that way. This is the move. Boom, over, up. See where my hand is? Mm -hmm. Now right here, I'm pushing my chest as over and as far creating this ledge as I can. You have a great lower ledge. We want to put it up here. So grab it, push. I'm flexing my chest a little bit. Literally shove it up there until it hurts. See that mound I'm creating right there? Yeah. Oh, mercy. That's what we want. Try to get. Yes! Take it up here. Right there. Now feel it. Feel it. Feel that? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it cramps. You do it till it is excruciatingly painful. Notice the moral of, notice the theme of this video? This is going to be his first time using VersaGrips. Um, these are not the right size for him. He would go with a size medium. These are a large for his wrist size but they are gonna get the job done. We're about to strap him to 50 pound bundle, dumbbells. Acknowledging that we previously wore out his finger strength. So that argument goes away. Now the idea is to wear out his traps, which happen to be much stronger than his fingers. So it makes sense you strap yourself to something. There you go. Stand up. Now you're gonna take that weight. Put this inside. On the outside, wrap your fingers. There you go. Yep. Now let it kind of set it. Feel it. You'll, as you straighten it, you feel that. Now you just turn it into He-Man. See what? Now the trick is then you turn it. Much easier to do this in a rack. Okay. I got you. There you go. Now, don't even worry about your thumb. Yeah. Feel that? One thumb is on, one thumb is over. This is our first attempt using these. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Just okay. Okay. Yeah. 
It's my second time training with this gentleman. From my perception, that's the first time I've seen him, in his eyes and everything, catch on to what I was saying.